It's been predicted that nanotechnology will produce the next industrial revolution. It will impact on all sectors of the economy, from materials to electronics, information technology, and so on. The idea I want to discuss today is the application of nanotechnology to science care, and, uh, to healthcare and medicine, and indeed how it might uh, solve some of the, the major problems that confront us. Before we start, let's just try to uh, uh, assess the scale of the problem globally. The mortality, mortality rates uh, from common diseases worldwide are really quite enormous. It doesn't matter whether you're in the developed world or the underdeveloped world. The only difference is the disease that kills you. The cost of health care, the, the cost of prescription drugs, for example, is going up exponentially and is unsustainable. So we need a new paradigm, and nanotechnology could well be that paradigm. It will give rise to better and safer drugs better uh, and earlier diagnostics, personalized medicine. And all this arises from the ability to observe disease and treat disease at the nanoscale. So let's just say a few words about nanoscale. The nanoscale is best visualized by thinking about the smallest object that can be seen by eye, even through a microscope. That's about one millionth of uh, the size of a human, one uh, micrometer. The nanoscale is a thousand times smaller and a DNA molecule is a rod one nanometer thick. Now, there are many nanostructures in biology. Here is the virus that you hear a lot about nowadays. It's about 100 nanometers in size, and it's already too small to see by eye. Many of the proteins that we're interested in are much smaller in size, just a few nanometers. But nanotechnology has given us the eyes to allow us to see these structures directly for the first time. So we can now go and see DNA in vivo. We can see here, if you look closely, the double helix structure. But furthermore, you can see dynamical motion of DNA. And that's critically important because in the treatment of cancer, drugs uh, target the machinery that controls DNA motion. So here you have a view of uh, uh, molecules in action. Another example, ion channels, these are proteins and cell membranes which control all the information flow to the interior of cells. They're important because they're modulated by drugs. They're very important drug targets and we can observe them directly in action. Now, one of the biggest challenges we can face in healthcare is the early accurate diagnosis of disease. That requires very, very expensive infrastructure. But nanotechnology can put the whole lab on a chip, okay? And these chips can be uh, uh, recyclable, disposable. So it makes it cheap and available to all. And that raises the question about who will actually benefit from nanomedicine. It's a big ethical issue. In the third world, in the developed world, the disparity of healthcare services <coughs> is enormous. And what I would argue is that nanotechnology has the opportunity to re redress that balance. As well as providing new technology, nanoscience can address some of the major issues confronting us. And that, uh, I would say, is probably the biggest issue, understanding the human brain with its 100 trillion connections. And this will involve studying single molecules and huge networks. And it will involve, for example, growing artificial neural tissue. This is a tissue grown on a nanostructured surface. Um, this will allow us to study uh, neurological disorders such as arising from stroke and dementia. And it will give us the opportunity to treat these diseases. So it's becoming possible, I think, to envisage a time when we will be able to probe and repair neural circuits. And that raises some important ethical issues. The one we've just heard about human enhancement. Where do we draw the line if indeed we do draw the line? Final point I'd like to mention here is that this work relies very heavily on uh, interdisciplinary collaboration. Uh, collaboration between academia, government and industry. Um, some of the newer work I have just mentioned involves uh, Japanese research labs and uh, Oxford University. So there is opportunity for further collaboration. Finally, just let me conclude by saying that nanomedicine, I think, has the opportunity to provide a better understanding of bi these biomedical issues, 
provide better health care and to provide health care for all. So thank you.